Discussions of human evolution have always talked about the importance of tool use for human existence. We use tools today for everything. We would be hardly able to survive without them. Indeed, in Darwin's earliest models of hominin evolution, he talked about tool use as being an important component. And yet, we don't have an archaeological record of stone tools in the fossil record until about two and a half million years ago, which means we don't have a very good record of tool use for the Australopithecines. Now, we know today that non-human primates use tools in a lot of different ways. Chimpanzees, for example, when they are termiting, when they're fishing for termites out of termite mounds, selectively take branches out of certain kinds of trees, strip the leaves and branches off of them, and use them then to fish for termites by sticking them in certain kinds of ways into termite mounds. This is a kind of tool that wouldn't preserve in the fossil record. We wouldn't be able to find it as an archaeological symbol of termite tool use. So it's possible that Australopithecines did use tools, but simply that they're not preserved in the fossil record. Raymond Dart thought that the Australopithecines were tool users by looking at the wrong kinds of evidence. He looked at evidence of broken teeth, broken bones, that were really just taphonomic signals, and thought that they were tools. But it turns out he might have still been right. Australopithecines may have been using tools. Over the last 10 years, we've discovered that there are in fact bone evidence at several Australopithecine sites, including places like Swartkrans, that might have been tools. Indeed, what we find are small tools, small bones, not unlike this stick that I have, that show evidence of polishing along the edges. This polishing around the edge might have been from repeated use. Australopithecines may have even been using these small bone instruments, much like chimpanzees use termiting sticks. Termites are an incredibly valuable resource, actually. They provide a lot of not only protein, but also fat, things that were in rare commodities on the African landscape. So Australopithecines may have actually used these little bone tools to get access to termite mounds by breaking into them during the dry season, a time period when the mounds are basically cased in concrete, and yet they represent very important ecological resources on the landscape, important sources of fat and protein. They may have also used these bones for basic digging instruments, digging up the roots and tubers of organisms that were also valuable nutritional resources on a landscape that were underutilized by other kinds of organisms. So it turns out, Australopithecines, we now think, may have actually been using tools, but tools that aren't as readily visible in the archaeological record as the kind of stone tools, the kind of modified stones that we'll be talking about with the origin of the genus Homo. So much like chimpanzees and several other non-human primates, Australopithecines may have been tool users, just not in the way that we've traditionally thought about tool use and tool construction.